Nope, it is a solar copter. This is the world's first solar powered helicopter taking flight. It was developed by a group of students who are passionate about aviation and felt even the sky wasn't the limit. Jibran Ahmed is one of those passionate engineers and he joins us now. So Jibran, explain to us, how does this solar copter work? Well, the way it works would be like any other solar powered vehicle. Um, all the power you need for the helicopter to fly is generated on board with solar cells, so there's no need for a battery or fuel storage of any other kind. It's completely independent. And the benefit of that straight off is the fact that it'd be able to fly constantly. As long as there's sunlight out, it won't have to return to recharge. So that's the main improvement of this design. Very interesting. Okay, so very first question, what happens when it's cloudy? What happens when it's raining? When it's cloudy and when it's raining, ideally when the prototype that we have gets developed further, we'll integrate batteries, and warning systems, which will warn the pilot at the radio controller end. But ideally, there'll be a battery on board which will store excess charge, which would then be um, expelled when, when needed, when there's less sunlight. Very cool. OK, so how did you come up with this idea? Well, this um, originally started as a third year project at Queen Mary University of London in the engineering department. And the design made at that time did have a battery on board and the helicopter flew off the battery. It recharged from solar power, but the flight was achieved from the battery. So six other engineering students and I, and I have taken it up to show that the helicopter can fly purely on solar power. And this is the part that's never been done before. So what is the helicopter made of? It's mainly made of carbon fiber rods, extremely thin carbon fiber rods. And we've set them up in a truss network to make it extremely strong. And this is the best way to keep a lightweight design. Carbon, carbon fiber is the best material to use for that reason. Now, we've heard, of course, of uh, solar planes. There's one that is circumnavigating the globe. That's the plan. So why a solar helicopter? Well, solar planes are very good at staying at high altitudes and flying for long times. And if um, all the application you want is glimpses of um, the planet below, then planes are the ideal choice. But helicopters are preferred in applications that require more maneuverability, more control. For example, flying in and around urban areas for um, surveillance, for search and rescue, you ideally want something that can hover in spot and really um, take stock of what's around. And that's only possible in helicopters. Interesting. So how does that compare then, say, to a battery? Let's say if you had a battery on board versus just the solar charger the way you have it working now. Now, battery technology has come a long way, but it's still not perfect. And Lithium polymer batteries are what you tend to find. These things with the helicopters around today will fly for about three hours at the most, and that's stretching it. So it's the issue of when you have an application you need the helicopter for, do you want to really be pulling it back to the base every three hours to recharge it? Or would you ideally like something that can stay out there and perform the duty you'd like? Okay, so you mentioned one use there. You mentioned surveillance. What's another purpose for this uh, helicopter that you could see? I could see it working, obviously, in places like the Middle East, uh, desert environments, places where there's lots of sun. Absolutely. Well, helicopters are also preferred, for example, even in Dubai or anywhere else around the world, for scientific measurements, taking atmospheric data, for tracking nature across area, um, um, animals as they migrate, for example. You might want to keep more control and not have a plane flying too fast to actually keep in time with the animals. So for scientific purposes, helicopters are preferred. Very interesting. So what's the next step for you and your team? So the next stage is just to improve it by shedding more weight and increasing the efficiency will give ourselves room to put more components on. So a GPS tracker would um, allow us to take steps to making the solar copter autonomous, adding better digital cameras and video transmitters. Now it can function as a surveillance as we ideally want it to. So it's about improving it and making it fit the real world applications better now that we've proved it can work. Oh, well, good luck. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jibran, and congratulations again. Thank you very much for arranging this. Thank you.